Do you want to stomp every game on Fizz like this? Do you want to become a master Fizz player? Game Weepers coach Jigs here, multi-season challenger player and now coach, and I'm very excited to bring you our ultimate Fizz guide. Abilities, combos, tips and tricks, runes, builds, everything is in here and by the end of this video you guys will know how to play the title Trickster like a challenger. If it wasn't for not subbot, this red hot guide might not even have been made, so quick shout out to him or her and everyone else who comments on our videos. Keep leaving your suggestions down below, we read every single one. Also remember to subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our daily uploads and check out gameleap.com, the premier site for League of Legends learning. Videos, courses, guides, hundreds of them made by challenger players and coaches to help you reach your potential. Alright, let's get into it, there's a lot to get through. Fizz is a complex champion, there are lots of intricacies you need to know about, but first, let's cover the basics. Your abilities. Your passive is Nimble Fighter. You take reduced damage from every instance of damage up to 50%, and you are also permanently ghosted, meaning you can run through minions, champions, and monsters without colliding. This effect is most commonly referred to as creep block. Well, you don't have to worry about this on Fizz. It's very useful in lane especially because you can walk over your minions and it is sometimes difficult for the enemy champion to target you specifically. They can often hit the minions next to you. This ghosting effect is also useful in fights. You can actually walk through champions. For example, you might want to get to the enemy backline so you can walk through whatever big frontline champion is in front of you to gap close. You can also dodge skill shots by walking through an enemy champion. When you are up close and personal, another way of evading the enemy's key abilities is to simply walk through them. Think of a Cassiopeia ultimate for example. This will be very rare, but it's still useful to know. Right, let's move on to your basic abilities and ultimate. So your Q, Urchin Strike. You dash a fixed distance towards the target enemy, dealing magic and physical damage. Important to note that your Q also applies on hit effects, so think of Lich Bane's Spellblade passive and your W active, which we'll get into shortly. Both proc on your Urchin Strike. There are three ways your Q can be used. First way, to engage. And there are four ways in which we can use our Q to engage. The first one, by engaging with our Q alone. So when the enemy champion is in range, simply Q onto them. Number two, by flashing and then queuing. Use this tactic when the enemy champion is very low on health and too far away for a standing Q. It's almost impossible to react to and guarantees a kill. Number three, by queuing through targets to gap close or to escape. Watch these clips. You notice how Fizz queues through a minion to get closer to the enemy champion? This is very handy in lane, especially when your jungler is ganking for you. You can catch up to your opponent by dashing through minions. You can use the same idea to escape certain situations. For example, you can queue away from the enemy champion by the creeps and jungle camps, and you can also queue through champions to get out of unfavorable fights. Note how Fizz queues through the Renekton here. Number 4. By synchronizing your Q with your ultimate. Use this when you want to catch your enemy off guard. It's quicker than simply pressing R and the animation is disguised as part of your Q, as shown in these cases. It's incredibly hard to react to and if you land it, a kill will almost certainly follow. Next we have your W, Seastone Trident. When skilled, you acquire a passive and active. The passive empowers your basic attacks so they deal magic damage over 3 seconds to an enemy. This applies on hit effects. The active grants your next basic attack bonus magic damage and 50 bonus range. If your activated W kills its target, the cooldown is reduced to 1 second and refunds mana. There are a couple of tips and tricks you have to know with your Seastone Trident. The active resets your auto attack timer. In other words, you can auto attack in W immediately. This is great for two things, CSing and trading. In lane, this mechanic makes it a lot easier to secure CS, especially under tower, and is also very effective in trades. You maximize your DPS and can consistently proc electrocute on a simple Q auto W auto combo. Another thing to know is that your W active can be used with your urchin strike, so you can Q and activate your W damage, and we'll get into some of these combos later. Moving swiftly on, we have your E, Playful Trickster. Now there are two parts to your E. The first part is called Playful. You vault towards the target location, balance on your trident, and become untargetable for three quarters of a second. Unless you cast your E again, you then hop off your trident and splash onto the ground below. You deal magic damage to any target in the splash area and slow them for two seconds. The splash area is actually indicated by a light blue circle around Fizz. The second variation is your trickster. When you press your E for a second time after mounting your trident, you dismount from your trident and dash towards the target location. This effect is a lot quicker and deals the same 
same damage as Playful Splash, but in half the radius, and does not apply the slow. So when would you only use Playful, and when would you use both Playful and Trickster? Well, seeing as the damage is the same, you want to use Playful to apply the slow. This is great in 1v1s and teamfights, because it makes the enemy less mobile. You can dish out more damage, and it's harder for them to catch up to you when you escape. One important trick you need to know is that you can flash before you splash. When an enemy champion tries to flash away from you in your combos, you can cast flash when you are dismounting your trident to close that gap and apply the damage in the slow, same as normal. This is extremely difficult to react to and is essential to master if you are to become a top fizz player. On the other hand, there are three big benefits of using Trickster and these are also playful's weaknesses, time, range and mobility. Using Trickster doesn't take as long to pull off because you can activate Trickster mid-air. The animation is completed a lot quicker. You can cover more ground with Trickster as well. Watch these clips. The dash on Trickster is actually longer than the second part of Playful. Finally, you can maneuver over terrain and structure with Trickster, not with Playful Splash, as you can see. These cool and useful spots you must know because they will save your life on multiple occasions and create a few kill opportunities as well. It's important to note that your Playful's mount can do exactly the same thing, and it's even easier to achieve because of its bigger range than Trickster's dash. But in all of these situations, you would want to escape or gap close as soon as possible and you can cover more ground using your Trickster to get over these structures. So you can use your E to jump over walls, you can E flash to surprise your opponents, why else would you use your E? Well one reason is to dodge skill shots and damage. This is most apparent in the early laning phase. Against ranged champions in particular, you can easily get harassed for moving within auto attack range of your opponent. To avoid this damage, simply press E. One trick to look for every time you E is to clip the enemy champion with your splash radius. The idea behind this is that you damage and slow them and can walk away without taking significant damage because they are slowed. At level 1 in particular, this is essential to learn. You would also use your E to wave clear. When you want to shove a wave or kill multiple minions on low HP, use your E and splash onto them. This is your best form of wave clear. If you do it correctly, you can hit every minion of a standard creep wave or cannon wave and you save time in doing so. One trick is to gather aggro from all the minions so they become clustered in a circle. Though the minions will move again after you mount your trident, this makes it a lot easier to E all of them. The most reliable way of damaging each minion is to wait until the enemy wave collides with your own. This stabilizes the minions and your E is guaranteed, but it is a little slower because you have to wait for the waves to meet. Finally, we have your ultimate, Chum the Waters. You throw a lure at the target location that attracts a shark, revealing the affected area before emerging after 2 seconds, dealing magic damage to surrounding enemies, knocking them back and slowing them for 2 seconds. The damage, knockback, distance and slow percentage are increased the further your ultimate travels. This is very important to understand. So, land a max range ultimate, the more deadly it becomes. If an enemy champion intercepts the lure as it's traveling, then it binds to that champion. They are then slowed for the duration and knocked up for one second instead of getting knocked back. So, how do you make full use of your ultimate? Well, it has two uses. One way to use it is as a close range slow. When you jump onto an enemy champion or get right up in their grill, use Shum the Waters to slow them and knock them up. When you're close to your target, it's a lot easier to land, obviously. Good players will know that your ultimate is a big threat and will be aware enough to dodge it as soon as you cast it. Closing that gap before using it is a very reliable way of hitting your ultimate, while still maintaining high kill pressure. This is most effective in lane, especially when a teammate is ganking for you. You can provide the crowd control they need to guarantee the kill by closing that space and then ulting. Think of a kindred for example. There are two ways to go about achieving this. We've talked about one of them, pressing R while you Q, the other, R and then flashing. Hover your mouse beyond the range of your ultimate, press R and then immediately flash. This actually extends the range of your ultimate and gives your opponent less time to react. This is great to use in lane and to gap close the enemy champions in fights. The downside is that you have to burn flash, but you have your Q available to deal more damage. You can also use this to escape sticky situations. Your R will slow the threat and when you flash out it should be more than enough to escape the danger. The other way to use your R is as a long range nuke. Keep in mind that the longer your ultimate, the bigger the impact. Hitting your ultimate max range is hard, right? As we talked about, if the enemy players are aware of your intention, they will dodge it. So you want to try to disguise your intention. When you're in lane, the best chance you have at landing your ultimate max range is when the enemy champion is busy doing something else. CSing is the obvious one. The enemy champion will be static for a short period of time while they auto attack the CS, and this is your best time to strike. Anticipate their movement, and as they are about to CS, 
just unleash the shark. You can also maximize your hit rate with your ultimate by coordinating it with your teammate's crowd control. In lane or team fights, when a teammate stuns, snares, roots an enemy carry, cast your ultimate as soon as the CC hits. The enemy champion won't be able to avoid this combo unless they have a QSS and you pick up a free kill. Sometimes this can still be tricky because smart enemy players, especially tanks, will block your ultimate as it's traveling to protect that CC'd enemy. Your ultimate's range is huge, 1300 to be precise, and this covers most of mid lane as you can see here. So try to envision this radius elsewhere on the map and use it over walls and terrain. In teamfights, flanking is this is a highly effective strategy because of your ultimate's range and your ability to E over walls. Let's go through the combos you need to know to become the ultimate Fizz Master. The first combo, E. Auto, W auto. E onto your opponent and as you land, auto attack. Press W and auto attack again. This W activation lets you get in another auto attack almost instantly because of the auto attack reset. At level 2, this combo is essential to know and use when the enemy champion tries to damage you or jump on you. Depending on how healthy you and your opponent are, you can choose to keep auto attacking and go for a kill or just walk away as they are slowed from the splash. Next combo. W, Q, Auto, E. This one is for maximum DPS at level 3 onwards. You W and then Q to proc your on-hit damage from your W, and then auto attack as soon as your urchin strike animation ends. This procs your electrocute, and then you can decide whether to save your E to avoid the return fire, or use your E aggressively to try land a kill. Another combo to know with your basic abilities is E, Auto, W, Auto, Q. You lead with your E instead of your Q to dodge whatever the enemy champion throws at you. This might be a Syndra Q, E, or a Z combo. You then splash onto them, Auto, W, Auto, and you can then choose whether to Q the champion to finish them off, or Q through a minion to escape and win the trade heavily. Now for the two ultimate combos you need to practice and use in your games. If the enemy champion is relatively healthy and you need to use all of the damage in your kit to kill them, use this combo. R, E, W and Q, Ignite. The key to all this is to land your ultimate. There will be some games where you are that fed you don't even need to hit your R, but until that point hitting it is important. A key tip when your ultimate lands is to time your E's splash when the enemy champion is knocked up because they won't be able to dodge your E. As soon as you land, W before queuing through them. If this doesn't kill them, then ignite and auto attack if need be. The second ultimate combo is for when the enemy is at 50% HP or lower. You don't need all the damage from a max range ultimate to kill them, so you are using your Q to guarantee to your R. We showed you this earlier. Q, R, E, Auto, W, Auto. Again, try to time your E with Chum the Waters' knock up. Auto, W, and Auto attack again. Do not use this combo if the target is close to full HP. The problem is that you use your Q on a minion to set up the sequence, so you miss out on damage on the enemy champion. Okay, so what do I buy on Fizz? The build we're about to recommend is based on the best Fizz players in the world, and they all start with a Corrupting Potion. This is great for early sustain and trading because of the burn it applies to your attacks and abilities while you have a charge running. For your first base, aim for Boots of Lucidity. These are 900 gold and offer 15 ability haste, which is a crucial stat on Fizz. If you have to buy on an awkward gold value, buy boots of speed and a dark seal. If you still can't buy lucidity boots when you hit the base, then you can buy either a Doran's ring or an amplifying tone. After cooldown boots, you now want to rush a Zonya's hourglass. This is 2500 gold. If the enemy champion is AP, then buy a fiendish codex first. If the enemy laner is AD, then buy a seeker's arm guard first. Both are 900 gold. After that, you buy the other two components of hourglass, one of them being codex or arm guard, and the last being a stopwatch, which is 650 gold. Zonya's is a great item for Fizz, survivability, ability haze, tankiness, and a good chunk of ability power. Your next major item is Leandri's Anguish for 3400 gold, your mythic. The reason this is preferred on Fizz is because of the 20 ability haze from its innate stats and the 5 ability haze you acquire on the rest of your items via the mythic passive. At full build, you will have an extra 20 ability haze from this effect, 40 in total from the item. From these three items, Lucidity Boots, Zonya's, and Anguish, you already have 50 Ability Haste, which is the same as 33% CDR. Up next, you want to buy Lich Bane. The ability power gives you a big spike in damage, the movement speed makes you slipperier than you already are, and the Spellblade passive procs on your Q and W. This item screams burst damage. Your last two items are always going to be Rabidon's Death Cap and Void Staff, unless you are snowballing out of control and want to upgrade your Dark Seal to Magi's Soul Stealer. If you didn't buy a Dark Seal in the 
the early game, then Magi's is still a good investment. Just make sure to buy it when you are ahead. Start building towards a death cap next, 3800 gold, if the enemy team has no magic resist. Rabadon's is all damage, and when you're super ahead, this will allow you to end games quicker. Start building towards a Void Staff 2500 gold if the enemy team squishies have magic resist already. This might be in the form of a Hex Shrinker, Mercurial Scimitar, Mercury Treads. You need the magic penetration to ignore that resistance. Remember, we're not buying Sorcerer's Shoes, so we don't have that magic pen in our kit. Now onto runes, here we go. Every game you are to use this rune set up on screen. Electrocute is a must, you can proc it easily in lane, and it amplifies your burst damage throughout a game. Take Sudden Impact, it works on your Q&E, Eyeball Collection for more damage, and Ravenous Hunter for sustain in lane and fights. Triumph is great for you because as an assassin you are fairly squishy, and in close 1v1s and teamfights, Triumph can come in real clutch and keep you alive. Coup de Gras is your last room because it increases your damage to low health champions. Think of an enemy with your ultimate on them below 40% HP. They are going to die. Minor runes take ability haste. Again, cooldown is massive on Fizz and a priority. Adaptive force next, and armor or magic resist depending on the matchup. Last up, skill order. And this is very standard. Start E followed by W and then Q. Then max out playful trickster, followed by your sea stone trident, and then urchin strike last. Put a point in your ultimate at level 6, 11, and 16. The reason for Emax is because it packs the biggest punch in terms of damage and the reduced cooldown means you can get more off in fights and allows for greater mobility. You max W next because it provides more damage than Q, especially when you auto attack and then W auto attack. I've had a ton of fun making this guide for you guys. If you enjoyed it, please remember to leave a like, leave a comment down below as well on what videos you want us to make in the near future and GameLeap.com, the only place for informative league content that will make sure you become the best player you can be. Join thousands of others and sign up today. Links in the description and comment section. This has been Coach Eags. Until next time, peace.